2007, Toto Mochi was born in a small pet shop called Jack's Exotic Pets in Long Beach, California. At age 7 months, he was adopted. Chato was brought to a big house, there he was often let out to play in the backyard, where he had ate unlimited crust and had fun. Although Chato had a pretty decent life in California, where he had lived for almost a year, from 2007 to mid-2008, his fun soon came to an end when he had to move to Las Vegas. The worst was yet to come. For three years, Chato did nothing with his life. With Chato's health steadily declining, he knew he had to do something. There he remained for two more years suffering, until November 13, 2010, on a Saturday morning where he had his chance to leave. His freedom came to him when his adopted parents left his cage door open. Chato's desperation to leave this prison made him attempt the impossible, jumping off a second story building to what could have been his death. Chato's escape to what he thought was freedom soon became his worst nightmare. Alan Malloy, an author of many stories, once wrote a story about Las Vegas and its deception of fake landscapes. In one of her quotes from the essay, The Flora and Fauna of Las Vegas, she stated, Water simply seemed too bountiful. It fills hoses, sprinklers, fountains, waterfalls, water slides, swimming pools, wishing wells, moats, fish tanks, and artificial lakes. Could this have been what Chata Munchi was saying? 
It is a fact that humans have the capacity to manipulate almost any landscape into a suitable place to live. But when does finding a suitable place to live become an obsession of not just finding a place to live, but finding a place to conquer? Rachel Carson believes that humans have become so arrogant and obsessed with taking over everything that our own existence has become at stake, as he states in one of his stories called Of Man and the Stream of Time that the price of conquest may well be the destruction of man himself. Chato lived on what he believed was a wilderness, but was actually nothing more than a human cage. For more than two months he remained lost in this suburban wilderness. Up to this day it was unclear what exactly happened to him or how he survived at all. He refuses to speak. On February 4, 2011, on a Friday morning around 4 a.m., a faint sound of barking and loud squeals that sounded like a baby were heard by the adopted parents, who at the time were having a smoke outside their apartment. They disregarded at first, but it got to a point where they couldn't ignore it anymore, so they had to check it out. As the parents walked towards the sound, which was a few blocks away, they could see what it looked like a chihuahua biting a black ball stuck on a fence. As they got closer, they couldn't believe what they were seeing. It was Chato stuck under the garden fence with a chihuahua biting him. They ran and kicked the dog out of the way and got him out. Chato was filthy. His whole body was covered in what it looked like smut. He had engine oil all over his paws and tummy. His back was red and bare since the dog bit some of his fur off. He was unrecognizable. It was hard to believe that Chato had survived all this time alone. 